Welcome to the wonderful world of animation. Animation involves inspiration, design, and creation. So, if you have a heart for art and a dream to bring life into your drawings, then animation is for you. Animation offers a wide range of exciting opportunities, from game design, TV commercials, feature films, CGI, special effects, and many more. Start your creative career with The Animation School. With over 121 awards in just 21 years, The Animation School ranks among the top international animation schools in the world. Join the Animation Nation and study at our state-of-the-art campuses in Cape Town and Johannesburg. Prepare your art portfolio and start your application to The Animation School. Apply online today. Welcome here at Filmnet Shop Talk Sessions. Please remember to go subscribe to our page and uh, future filmmakers, be so kind and watch all the movies because it will make you a better filmmaker and give you better products uh, for the market later on. So we are very pri privileged today to have Natani Lundberg here, which is an award-winning fine artist and academic. She is a visual art coordinator at the UNISA Department of Arts and Music, senior lecturer in visual arts multimedia arts, and then she has won numerous awards, Cagnet Fiesta, Apsa Kaka and Ka Kana Award, uh, Hello Ambassador Creative of Excellence Award, Apsa Latelier Merit Award, Best Honours Art Student Award, Shu Natani, the lace is long. That's fantastic, <laughs> wow. And uh, we are you. very privileged to have her here um, for the Animation Shop Talk. Thank you. Welcome so much um, on this cold morning. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You're a fine artist, an animator. Where does the love for animation come from? I think um, it comes from a very young age. When I was little, my dad brought me small notebooks from the office. And I started to draw little girls sliding on water. And each page was this one girl just sliding. And um, with every page, her movement changed. And that's where the idea of stop frame animation started. So it was since I was four years old, and there's about 50 books where I did the same thing. And I always told my parents, I'm going to be an artist. And um, they enrolled me for graphic design. And then I broke my hip at university after four months of enrollment um, as a graphic design student. And then after that, I decided to do fine arts and I think it was the right choice. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So at a young stage, like all our filmmakers, you started with animation and just drawing stop motion. That, uh, stop motion, can you explain us a little bit more about what is stop motion animation? Stop motion is when you take an object, say for instance a toy, like a He-Man toy. Do you know He-Man? Okay, great. <laughs> Most of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> or Superman toy. And um, you take a photograph where he's in one position. And then in between two frames, you move that object very slightly. And then you take another photograph where... It seems like he changed his movement by himself. We actually, you manipulated that movement. Okay, so it's, and then you keep on doing that. Say, for instance, you want to move that object from point A to point B, where he walks and he does a somersault. Mm -hmm. And then appears as if he did it by himself. That's amazing. Where you actually manipulated all the movement in between the frames. And then you sequence 
the movement with a sequence program and I just usually do it with Microsoft Video Maker. No it's way. so, yeah, it's so easy. You just sequence it. You take each frame and you change the time of each frame and then um, Movie Maker automatically sequence it for you and then you export it. That's amazing. So you don't need a fancy program to do animation. Yes, if you have Microsoft on your computer, which I assume all of us does, then you can do it. Then That's it's almost like an open source program. You can get Microsoft uh, Movie Maker online. It's a free download. So to all of those animators, you can get it online. So animation is not just drawings. It's stop motion. Are there any other types of animation that uh, exists? Not just the drawing or stop motion? Yes, 3D animation also exists. Who of you have ever done 3D animation? Like Shrek? Is that 3D? Yeah, that's um, VFX almost. Okay. So um, 3D is when you use a 3D program such as Blender and it um, you must have some experience with mathematics and science. Okay. And you don't necessarily have to be very artistic to do it because it's almost like puppet movement. So you don't have to be able to draw very well if you do 3D. But it's good to have the basics of drawing if you do it because then you understand the whole idea of form and shape. And also the seven elements of art will help you with compositioning. But 3D animation works on a whole different um, basis than 2D animation. But for 2D animation, like a flash animation, you will need to be able to draw. Okay, okay. So flash animation is where you draw. Tell me quickly, um, this multimedia has broadened out so much. We are, I keep on saying this, we are in the middle of the fourth revolution. Uh, where can you go work if you have uh, experience in animation? Films, yes, but is there other avenues as well? Yes, definitely. Uh, for you guys that are based in the Cape, there's so many studios where you can work in Cape Town. Um, are you guys familiar with studios like that? Okay. Okay. So there's a studio called Triggerfish. Write it down. It's the largest movie making or animation making studio in Africa. Wow. And their animations are actually um, so good that some of them get nominated for Oscars. Oh, wow. Yeah. So right here in Cape Town? Yes. Okay. And um, uh, recently, one of the animations called um, Revolting Rhymes were nominated for an Oscar. It was a TV production. Revolting Rhymes. I'll go check that up. Yes. yes okay. Very cool. Awesome. So there, you work in a studio, you can make your own films, you can make your own, produce your own stuff. Um, so there is a lot of uh, career opportunities out yes, there. Yes, like third floor as well in Cape Town. And then there's um, Polycat that specializes in uh, visual effects as well. Um, what else? <coughs> Lucon okay. that um, specializes in pre-production, creation, um, post-production, which includes editing. Okay. So um, there's a lot of studios. And then in Johannesburg, there's an animation studio hub as well. So you, if, you have, uh, if you can do animation, uh, not just in South Africa, you can do it all over the world. Yes. And like in America... Um, Usually, the animation studios require a bachelor's degree for you to get in.
But in South Africa, it's cool because you have to have the skill to get in. So you don't necessarily have to have the degree, which okay. is really cool. That's fantastic. So if you start animating now at the age of 15, 16, like our film meters are, by the time they get out of school, they have got the skills and they don't necessarily need a degree. Would you recommend to go get a degree and become better just technically with your, with your skills? Self-teaching is always a really good way for learning. Um, at UNISA, we've got a multimedia degree that includes animation. And what, uh, for UNISA, it's distance learning. So what it requires is that the students do self-learning with animation. So basically, the students must go and download tutorial letters to teach okay. themselves. So um, it's basically no residential teaching. Um, so there's actually a, a lot of value in self-teaching. So you don't have to go to a specific university. You can study at home. I know that's very big now with uh, just COVID having passed. And um, so you're a big advocate of self-learning. Yes, definitely. So the, uh, YouTube is such a source of knowledge. You can look anything up on YouTube. Okay, so that's the new age, guys. You can look anything. We'll have questions just afterwards. Um, you can look anything up on YouTube. You can self-learn through UNISA. You can download the degree. So you don't necessarily have to go to an institution. Tell me quickly, how do they make a great animation portfolio? Must they have stop motion and 3D, or can they specialize in a certain uh, type of animation? Okay, it's always good to have a variety of work in your show reel that you're going to show the studio. So a show reel means that you're going to have a 10 minutes video where you showcase your best videos, just snippets of your best videos, whether it's for commercials or um, TV productions or just animations or um, little exercises. But uh, that's a show reel. So um, if your niche is animation, like 2D animation, choose a company that specializes with 2D animation. And then you go to that company with your portfolio. If you specialize with 3D animation, go to a company that specializes in 3D animation. If you if you are good with VFX, which is visual effects, um, you know, like with Lord of the Rings, how they made um, Schmeagol. Oh, that's also animation, right? Yeah, that's, that's good. That they do have a, a green screen. That's okay? a lot. Of, a lot of our movies are are that type of special effects now. Yes. So um, choose your niche area and then choose a, a studio, an animation studio that operates in that niche area. There's so many studios that you can choose from. Even in Pretoria, I only mentioned Joburg and Cape Town, but because it's the hubs, but in Pretoria, there's also a lot of studios as well. So um, I think in Cape Town alone, there's something like 80 studios. 80? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you can really pick and choose. That's fantastic. So there's a lot of studios specializing in different types of animation. Tell me quickly, um, so I can draw a little bit. How do I come up with a character? What makes a good character for an animation movie? Well, I, I guess it depends on the narrative. That means the storyline of the animation. So it means that you must be able to draw and to make a storyboard. Um, and it depends on the screen or the script writing as well. Okay. And then the characteristics of that 
character. So you just um, you don't just start drawing. You start to develop that character by writing the story about that character. Okay. And then the characteristics of the character, and then you can start drawing the character. So you interpret the narrative through visually, but you write it down first. Often a screenwriter will write it down, and then your process is to then interpret the characteristics and maybe heighten the eyes or something like that? Yes, exactly. Okay. Tell me quickly... Um, I struggle with inspiration. Now, I've seen your films. Where do you come up with, how do you get inspired for those stories? Now, what do you do? Is there anything, like you said, you go to the script, but, but where can you get inspiration from other movies or books? What do you do? Um, well, individually... Um, I don't know if you've seen my films. If you want to see it, you can go to my website, Natani Lineberg. Um, we will put the link up on the film at uh, movie. Yeah. And then they can have a look over there. Great, yes. Yes, so you actually need to watch it first. But um, how I get inspiration is by my unconscious. So I get these dreams, and then when I wake up, I write down the dreams immediately. And that's something that I learned um, through surrealism, the movement surrealism. And um, uh, Salvador Dali, this very weird artist in the surrealist movement, did that. He ate a lot of meat the night before, and then he got these weird dreams and he wrote it down and he made these amazing surreal paintings. And I get inspiration from my dreams. And then I make my characters according to what I remember from my dreams. And um, I make dreamscapes. So it's basically inspired by dreams and the unconscious and also traumatic memories and um, stories of traumas um, that I collect from other people okay. that goes through traumatic experiences. And it's also got a lot to do with post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, so your, your stories deal with trauma, deal with things in the real world, but through animation. There's a, there's a lot of films that do that and uh, I think uh, film is a very good um, medium you know to address those issues to address uh, those d different type of things
And so you create dream characters. In animation, is there a limit to what you can create in animation? Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. Because animation is a field of creativity. And creativity is limitless. So there's no barrier. Um, if you can dream it, that. you can do it. If you can dream exactly. it, you can do it. Yes, that's yes. fantastic. Okay, so um, do you draw from other styles of art to inspire you, except surrealism? Because you, you said... Oh, yes, of course. Um, no. Not? Okay. Not really. I think I, I stick to surrealism. And yes. a big ad advocate of self-learning, because you taught yourself... Yes. Uh, animation so you can definitely do it by yourself tell me quickly is there um, different sectors we've got animation 2d and then 3d and then stop motion in a studio what would be the setup because I've heard about colorists and um, people that are there different aspects that people can specialize in animation like being a colorist or designing characters or stuff like that? Yes, um, definitely. Um, so you, you can go into storyboarding where you just create the storyboard because um, to create an animation, you need to work in, t in teams. There's not just one person creating an animation. You work in teams. Usually it starts with the script writer. So there's per a person writing a script. Okay. Then um, there's an animation director, that's a team leader, um, overlooking the whole process um, of the animation. Then uh, you'll get the storyboard designer that illustrates the whole storyboard. Then you have your animator uh, who animates the film, and usually the animator has a team of people that helps um, him or her to animate. If you look at companies like Pixar or Disney, the animated team is very large. Okay. And then you have the effect animator that just works with the effects of the, um, of the animation. Like bombs and stuff like yes. that. Yes. Okay. And then you have the edit, uh, the um, the post-production team that just works with the editing of the animation. So there's editing in the animation as well? Yes. Okay, so it's, it's like a movie process. Yes. Just with a larger team, with animators, different guys doing different stuff yes. for the different characters. Um, I love Shrek. Have you guys? I love Shrek. And one of my favorite <coughs> parts when I watched um, the making of Shrek, was that the animators looked at the actors to get certain facial yes, features. Yes, yes. So, so if the actor has a big mouth, like... Uh, um, Eddie Murphy. Like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Donkey has a big mouth. So you look at the f physical characteristics of the actors as well. And um, do you... Would you say that uh, you can be open for those type of things during the process um, of animating? And how, how do you think that that can help the process? 
Um, I think definitely if you work with um, voiceovers uh, like the typical Hollywood films and Disney and Pixar films and you use actors, then um, the actors are pretty much intertwined with the characters and the actors become the characters and the characters become the actors. So you need to connect both of them into one. So I think that is a very positive way of thinking about it. Okay, so the actor and the character comes together. Yes. Um, that's very interesting um, to me because I've got an actor's background and I always wondered whether I would be Shrek or Donkey. <laughs> But let's, enough about that. Um, thank you so much. We're going to go to questions just now, guys. So don't you go anywhere. Um, we'll be back right now. There we go. Welcome back, guys. So now for questions from our filmmakers. Yes, from you. Um, what would you say is the most important um, thing to make your story more engaging and um, more interesting, like little things to think about? Hello. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Definitely detail. If you have detail, it makes it immediately more interesting and it leaves the viewer into the storyline. If your characters are very simplistic and your colors are very flat, your story falls flat and it becomes um, very superficial. But if there is a lot of detail in a film, then it becomes more intricate and it definitely pulls the viewer into the picture flat. Frame. So I think detail is one of the most important things in an in a animation that makes it more interesting. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you have any computer software that you recommend, preferably free for animation and uh, uh, yeah? Okay, so you are talking about open source animation um, programs. I would say um, if you use your um, phone, your Android, um, I would uh, prefer for stop frame animation, um, iMotion, um, iMotion Maker. And then there is a lot of um, editing programs as well that you can just Google, that's open source. I know that there is a lot of programs. Um, you can just Google some. I also know that for the Adobe programs, um, usually it costs a lot, but there is companies that provide student discount and also that there's trial versions that you can use for a month for free. So that's also very nice for if you have projects that needs to be completed for a deadline. So, um, and uh, there's programs like, um, I think there's a free um, registration times for Blender as well. So just Google and see what is open source because it changes every now and then. But there's a lot of open source programs. Um, how would you use or um, situate the frames in an animation to give it like a flowing type of action or motion? Okay, so... Um, I guess you are referring to stop motion because stop motion usually have this ability to seem a bit um, fragmented. So to um, make the frames more flowing, you have to set the speed to 12 frames per second so that it um, is a bit more consistent. And then the key secret to stop motion animation is that you keep your camera 
very still and in the same position so that it doesn't shift around so that your frame is very consistent throughout the shoot. And um, that's how you get it. So that your, your frame rate must be correct and your camera positioning must be correct. And then you get the perfect flow in your animation. And then with normal animation, um, it automatically, your, your frame rate will automatically be correct um, because you set the whole, um, like in Premiere, you set the whole movie rate, um, spray, uh, frame rate correctly. And then, um, yeah, but with stop motion, it's very important to set it to 12 frames per second. Wow, thank you so much. That's fantastic, Natani. Listen, you guys, let's give a nice round of applause. Thank you, Natani, for joining us here and Film It. And I'm sure the animators can't wait. Thank, thank you. you so much, Natani. Thank you.